everyone, I'm so excited to be creating a vlog for 16 weeks today and to get to share my week with you. In today's episode, we're going to be talking a little bit about my daily routine, what it's like to work as a mobile product design intern at Ceridian, what I like to do in my free time, and I'll give you as much advice as I can give you within 10 minutes. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Alright, so getting into the vlog, how do I start my day off? To start my mornings off a couple times a week, I try to go on a run at around 8am. And living in Montreal, we picked a central area right beside the McGill campus and the downtown core. We'll be honest though, that is on the ideal day. Ever since working online, I find that I'm up around 845 and at the laptop with a cup of coffee for a 9am start and don't have too much of a morning routine during the week. So, for what most of you are probably here for, what do I do as a mobile product design intern at Ceridian? While my desk setup isn't as fancy as some people, Ceridian did make sure to give us all of the tech that we need to design, including a MacBook, mouse, keyboard, as well as an external monitor, but I usually only use my MacBook screen and find that this is more than enough for me to design well, and this way, I get to carry the laptop around, sometimes even going to work in the park with my roommates or just working all over the city. While the work that you do as a designer might look completely different between various roles or companies, you still should continue to leverage the typical design process. Designers need to begin by empathizing with the user, then we need to define the problem and really understand what is within scope. And you can use things like, like a user need statement or a problem statement for this. Following this, you begin your ideation phase. And this is where you really begin to wireframe and just try to figure out how you want to solve the problem at hand. Next, you'll be prototyping using tools like Figma, Adobe XD, etc. And finally, you'll be testing whatever you create with real users. Now that we've taken some time to learn about what Ceridian is, what product design is, let's take some time to chat with Francis, who is a product designer on the mobile team at Ceridian. All right, so the first question is, what do you do at Ceridian? I've worked at Ceridian since August of 2020, uh, and I've been a product designer for seven years, uh, specifically mobile for three. And what type of products are you building at Ceridian? I work uh, with the Dayforce mobile product here. I am the designer that supports, we have about 20 uh, developers. All things mobile when it comes to design. What have I been up to over the past couple of weeks at Ceridian specifically? At Ceridian, I'm currently allocated on two projects. The first one is the Dayforce mobile app. So Dayforce is a mobile app as well as a website um, and essentially what we're building is human capital management software. The next thing that I'm working on is building out the design system for Ceridian. So a design system by definition is a single source of truth which groups all of the elements that will allow teams to design effectively. Next up let's talk about what I like to do in my free time. So first up on the list of things to do in Montreal, we have Mont Royal, which is one of Montreal's most famous landmarks and it's also a really great place to just explore the greenery, especially over the summer. We'll also spend some of our nights walking through the city without a plan, ending up in new parts of the city, and what you see on the screen here is actually Little Portugal. One of my favorite places so far in the city is Old Montreal, so this is another amazing place to visit because you can see the waterfront, walk through the cobblestone roads of Old Montreal, or you can visit its many art galleries. And whenever I need a change of scenery, I'll usually visit the park right beside the McGill campus. Lately, we've also visited a variety of used bookstores, but we usually hide out in the English-only section. Another really great thing that we like to do in the city is just visit the park. You can sit, read, talk, do whatever with your friends, and it's just a great way to admire the sunset and really experience the city. Something else that I like to do in my free time is a podcast called For Context, which is something that I started out with a couple friends back at the beginning of the pandemic, and we like to describe it as a casual conversation where we candidly discuss some of our dreams, failures, and motivations as we step into the world of tech, talking about our experiences at the University of Waterloo, and just as we navigate our lives over the next couple years. 
I also currently volunteer on BW Blueprint where we build tech for social good and I've been a product designer on the team for about three terms now. So I've built for organizations like Raising the Roof that you see here, as well as Planet Read. And we get to work on cross-functional teams with other students from Waterloo while interacting with clients from all over the world. And it's been an integral part of my university career and an experience that I am very grateful for. And now it's time to answer all your burning questions. So let's cue the advice. What program are you in and what school do you go to? So I'm currently studying in my second year of systems design engineering at the University of Waterloo. And the way that I like to describe it, systems design engineering is almost an interdisciplinary program where we seek to understand the way in which society is affected by technology. How did you find your internship? Recruiting is never really that fun personally, and I think I applied to about 150 jobs looking for my summer 2021 internship. Um, but one of the great things about Waterloo is that we actually have this program called Waterloo Works, which is where employers can hire Waterloo students. So this is where you apply for jobs, interview, and you'll receive offers through this platform. But I also applied to quite a few externally, and so I leverage sites like interns.design and co-folios for that. So interns.design is a really great platform, which is essentially a database of various design jobs um, including internships as well as roles for new grads um, all over North America and it's just a really great way for you to see all of these jobs um, in one specific job board. And another one is Cofolios and one of the great things about this one is that they have portfolios as well so examples of case studies, projects, things like that and they also have a job board where you can apply and it'll just take you straight to the company's link. Why did you decide to intern at Ceridian? So for me, as a junior designer, there's two things that I highly value when looking for my internships. So the first one is to work at a company that is design driven. So having a team of developers and PMs that really value your opinion is really important to me. Um, and just people that trust your opinions um, or your decisions as a designer. And the next thing is mentorship. So especially being very early on in my career, so this is my third internship, but my second internship in design, and I still just require a lot of mentorship. And I love being able to be surrounded by senior designers where I can you know, continually learn from their experiences and just draw from all their design knowledge. What skills and past experiences helped you get this internship? So in my opinion, the most important thing to have when you're applying for a design internship is a portfolio. So a portfolio is made of a few case studies outlining some of your design projects. And the main purpose of this is to A, show that you can use various design tools like Figma, Adobe XD Sketch, but also show that you have an understanding of the UX design process. Um, in terms of my personal experiences, I got into design by participating in hackathons as well as designathons hosted um, by Adobe. They're called Adobe Creative Jams, and that's how I began to build projects for my first portfolio. And then after that, I got my first internship at the Ontario Digital Service. It's a product design and user research intern. And at the same time, I was volunteering on various student organizations. So that included Plus UW and Global Spark as a graphic designer. And while graphic design isn't the exact same thing as product design, um, it was a really great way for me to continue building my visual design skills. What are your top tips for working remotely? So at this point in time, I've actually done two remote school terms as well as two remote internships. And my biggest tip for working remotely would be to be hyper organized. So anybody that knows me in person knows that I really love to use Google Calendar and Google Keep. So on Google Calendar, I will usually plan out my night or uh, plan out my day the night before. And so I'll, I'll time box elements and I'll figure out how much time I want to allocate to every single task that I'm going to get done that day. And I keep track of all of it through Google to Keep. Um, and speaking for my internship specifically, one thing that I really like to do is a daily task tracking. So this way I can share it with my manager, mentor, my coworkers, etc. And it's just a really great way to be more transparent with the rest of your team and also hold yourself accountable. How do you continue to learn about product design? So for myself personally, I continue building projects at hackathons, designathons, things like that, as well as personal projects, just because I find that for design, practice makes perfect. Um, and then another way that I really like to learn is actually through watching YouTube videos, as well as just reading articles or finding resources online. So personally, some of my favorite YouTubers for design would be Mizco, Femke, Chen Buns. Those are all just really great people where you can learn how to build your portfolio, interview tips, things like that. Um, and then another place is also Medium, just because you can find very specific articles for almost any UX problem that you need. What, what is the most valuable lesson learned from your internship? Two things that stand out to me. So the first one is I'm currently working on the design systems team at Ceridian. 
And so what that means is I get to really do a deep dive in understanding how typography, coloring, branding, and all of those elements work together to support UX. And then another thing is that this is a much bigger organization than what I'm familiar with. Uh, so it's just really interesting to see sort of how all of the pieces of the puzzle work together, whether that be developers, PMs, as well as other designers and how important it is to really understand the project context and understand how the feature that you're working on affects the rest of the organization. so much for watching today's episode of 16 weeks of internships be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and comment down below letting us know if there's anything else you'd like to see on this channel also follow 16 weeks on instagram facebook as well as linkedin to learn more tips related to professional development and career growth we look forward to seeing you next week in this series of 16 weeks of internships to learn more about Kristen's internship at behavior interactive